A very good morning to you. My name is Anna, Anna English to be exact, and I am broadcasting to you live from London, England, where I am from. Today we are looking at how to write a CV or a resume, as some of you may call it, in English. So this is a, li a live English lesson and I am English so I will be teaching you everything I know about writing a CV or a resume um, during this lesson today. So if you have any questions then feel free to put your questions in the comments box and as we go through this lesson, which will be a very long lesson, then I will try my best to help you as much as I can. Being a native obviously I have some experience of writing CVs and of course I'm very experienced in the language that is English, my native language, so I'll do my very best to help you today. So let me say a quick hello to everyone. I've got everyone here in the um, YouTube room. Hello. So 76 of you in at the moment. Hi, wherever you are in the world. Say a quick hello to me if you haven't already. Um, hello to my patrons. Patrons, I've got you here in the chat room. Good morning to you. Now, before I do start this lesson, this business English lesson, I do need to say that this video is sponsored today by italki. Now, if you're not familiar with italki, italki is a large online database of both native and non-native teachers that offer video lessons 24 hours a day, so it can be completely convenient to you. And they don't just teach English, they offer hundreds of languages, and the best thing is the price. These one-to-one -one lessons are very affordable. Uh, they're cheaper than offline lessons at around 30% of the cost. And to make it even better, I've managed to arrange a special offer just for you. Italki will credit your account with $10 when you buy your first lesson. So basically, it's like buy one, get one free. And all you have to do to take advantage of that offer is to click on the link in the description box below. So it's the very first link in the description box below for you to get that $10 credit when you buy your first lesson. So, hello Ella. Ella has dropped me a super chat already. So this, this video is also sponsored by Ella and her super chat. Thank you so much, Ella. And you said, Anna, I love how you follow your dreams. Thank you so much, sweetheart. That's very, very kind of you. So Ella, of course, as you know, anyone who drops a super chat during this lesson, um, your message will highlight so I can read it and so that everyone else can see it. And also, as a way of saying thank you, you will receive the notes from this lesson. Now, I spent hours last night writing these notes for you, and these are the notes we're going to go through today. I've tried to make them quite concise, and also I will send you the sample CVs that I've pulled from the internet as well. Okay? So, thank you very much, Ella. I will send these over to you after the lesson. If you just drop me another email just to remind me and I'll send you those notes at the end of the session. If anybody else would like those notes and you're not sure what a super chat is, it's the little dollar sign next to the emoji sign in the comments section so that you can donate to the growth of this channel and this community. Okay, so shall we get started with this incredibly important lesson? So, tell me in the comments now have any of you ever had to, or are any of you considering writing a CV in English to apply for a job in the UK or in an English speaking country or company? So let me know how many of you watching now need to write your CV in English. Let me know. Okay, and as you're doing that, I'm going to get started. So, how to write a CV? When you apply for a job in the UK, you may be asked to provide one of the following documents. So you may be asked to provide a CV, which stands for Curriculum Vitae. Curriculum Vitae. Now, we very rarely say Curriculum Vitae. It's a very long way of saying CV. So in almost all cases, when speaking, we just say CV. We never really say curriculum vitae. But now you know what curriculum vitae is, a CV. Now a CV is basically 
a summary of your work experience, your skills and your education. This tells a potential employer why you are the best candidate for the job. So it's, it's a way of selling yourself. It's like a sales pitch for yourself. It tells an employer all the best bits about you, your education, your skills, and your experience. Okay, so that's a CV. Now, be aware that many of you will know this as a resume. A resume. And we pronounce it like that. Resume. Resume. But this is American. Okay, we don't use resume here in the UK. So, obviously, important to know the both. Um, but if you are applying to a job in the UK, you'll be asked for a CV, which is a resume. All right? Um, always good to know the difference. Um, okay, so... Um, a few of you are telling me that you have had to write to um, companies that are British or English and you've had to write CVs and you need to write one now. Goodness me, okay, so good. Good. Lots of you are going to make good use of this lesson because lots of you need to be writing CVs in English. Good, okay. Um, all right, let's get going again. Um, Cristiano says he'd like to be the king in the UK. <laughs> you can't apply to be the king. Unfortunately, you have to be born into royalty. Um, all right, so a CV. That's the most important thing that you'll need when applying for a job in the UK. Um, you may also be asked to write a cover letter. It's pretty standard to have a cover letter with your CV. So a cover letter is a letter that accompanies your CV a letter accompanying your CV. So you have to send them both together. You can't just write a cover letter if it's got nothing to cover. The cover letter covers your CV and it highlights details about your application to the company. So cover letters, we can cover this in another lesson. Um, it's a lot to cover in one session just doing a CV. So we'll do cover letters in another session, but a cover letter is a letter that accompanies your CV. Then you'll also, in some cases, be asked for a reference. Now, a reference is a formal letter to an employer from somebody who knows you well. And we're not talking about, we're not talking about your family or your friends. We're talking about um, a professional person. So it's usually a teacher. If you've just come out of education, it'll be a teacher. It would be um, a previous employer, normally, if you've been in employment for a number of years. So hopefully you'll have someone who can give you a good reference. There'll be a, a referee who likes the work that you've done, who's happy with you as an employee or as a student and will give you a good reference. And as I just mentioned, the person who gives you the reference is a referee. A referee. The very same referee that we say in a football match, you have a referee. So it's pronounced exactly the same, a referee. Alrighty. So... How do we actually write a CV? Should we get on with that? Yes, I think we should. So, oh, Anna, bless you. Anna has also decided to sponsor this lesson and this community. Thank you very much. Anna Paula Santos has said, thank you for your lessons. Thank you, Anna, that's very much appreciated. All the contributions to these videos goes into one big savings pot and all that money then goes towards buying better equipment. Um, I'm actually looking now to move house in, in order to get a nicer property so that I can work more effectively to get better internet. Um, so everything that's contributed here goes towards making these lessons better for everybody. So thank you very much, Anna. You're amazing. Drop me an email and I will send you these notes. Um, the email address is in the description of this video. But please don't send emails if, you, um, if you're just watching and you haven't dropped a super chat. Don't just drop me an email because honestly I get hundreds of emails and it makes it very difficult for me to work efficiently. So Anna, please send me an email and Ella, please send me an email. Um, right, let's carry on. So structure. How should you structure your CV? We tend to say no more than two sides of A4. A4, if you don't know, is a piece of paper. Um, it's, this, it's this size of paper. So this is an A4 piece of paper. 
So a piece of A4 is how we would normally refer to this. A piece of paper, a piece of A4 to be precise. The size is A4. So, oh, make us a bit brighter here. Um, so a CV should be no more than two sides of A4. Ideally, one side. So you could do two sides, but ideally just the one side. Okay. Um, remember that the people who are reading your CV don't have much time. And I read a statistic that said, sorry, I'll come back to you. A statistic that said most potential employers will only read your CV for 8.8 .8 seconds on average. 8.8 .8 seconds. It's not very much time. So you want to make sure that your CV is concise and to the point and short. So it gets all the best bits out quickly and doesn't just, just have lots of fluff and extra thrills. Extra thrills, extra frills. <laughs> Two different things. Okay, so keep it short, ideally to one side of A4. It is, typically, it is typically expected that you follow this structure when writing your CV. All right, so this is the structure we're gonna go through now. Now, just to let you know, I, in my life, have had many jobs. I have written a number of CVs. However, my main career has been around performing, presenting, acting, modeling, and therefore, my CV style is a very different style because when you're an actor, a presenter, a model, you have a very, very different CV to a business CV. I know about the general structure of a business CV and I've done hours and hours of research for you to put together these notes and to do this lesson, but I'm not an expert. So I'll help you as much as I can and these notes have been thoroughly researched, but I'm not an expert. So please feel free to ask your questions. In fact, it may be best to ask your questions at the end when I have time to read them all. Um, but just so you know, I'm not um, a recruitment specialist. So there may be some questions that I can't help you with, but I'll try my best. All right. So we have the first thing you should put on your CV is your contact details. Never put at the top of your CV, CV. Don't write curriculum vitae at the top of your CV. The very top of your CV should be your contact details. So your name, your full name. And when I say full name, I, I wouldn't include my middle name. So my name is Anna Tyree. So I would put at the top of my CV, Anna Tyree. I wouldn't put Anna English Tyree, English being my middle name. I wouldn't put that, I just put Anna Tyree. My, my first name and then my family name. And then you should put your address. So a, um, an actual full address where they can write to you and give you a letter of confirmation or a letter of rejection, depending on how well it goes. Um, you should also then definitely put a contact number. Now, if you have a landline and a mobile, I would put both. You want them to be able to contact you. So give them as many opportunities to be able to contact you as possible. So I put my contact number. And then your email address. Now, make sure your email address is a professional looking email address. If you weren't present in the lesson that I did a few days ago, maybe last week, about sending business emails, formal emails, I stressed there that it's very important that you have an email that just represents you as a business person, as someone who is employable, reliable. Um, you shouldn't put something like um, Fun Girl 2020 or you know something silly, something that ideally just represents you as a sensible person. So my email address might be, for example, English like a native at gmail.com or Anna. Tyree at gmail.com. Okay, so these are very sensible business emails. So put your sensible email address at the top with everything else. Important to note, do not include your DOB. DOB stands for date of birth. Date of birth. Don't include your date of birth. Um, it's quite important that you do um, follow this because basically... It's important that recruiters don't discriminate based on age or based on the way you look. And this is why these points are important. If they know how old you are, they may, they may discriminate against you because you're too young or because you're too old. 
And that is not allowed. There are rules um, that say that you cannot discriminate based on age or based on appearance. Um, unless, of course, a person is very scruffy and doesn't turn themselves out very well. But um, don't include your date of birth and don't include a photograph because then they can judge you based solely on your experience and your skill, not on anything else. The only difference to this would be if you are an actor or a model or a presenter, then you will need to include a photograph. Still don't include your date of birth, but um, do include a photograph, okay? If you're an actor or a model and you're applying for an acting or modeling job. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward. Everyone happy with that so far? All happy? Um, as, as Kia says, I'm 14 years old, why am I here? Well, as Kia, if you're here to learn English, then it's a good place to be. And also, you may be 14, but soon you'll be applying for jobs. I did my first job when I was uh, 15 years old. I had to write my first CV, so it might be good that you're here. Um, oh, Serene, bless. Serene has dropped a super chat, and you've put, I appreciate what you've done for us. I love you. Thank you, Serene. I love you too. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, that will go into the pot and go towards contributing more to this channel. So, Serene, please drop me an email and I will send you all the notes at the end of the session. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so let's carry on. Everyone seems quite happy with how we open our CV. Hello, Eric. You are... You are present in the chat room. How are you? You said nowadays there are many computer programmers searching for jobs. Is there a special CV for them? Um, there are a number of different types of CV that you can create depending on um, your industry um, or if you're a freelancer or just looking for a regular job. Um, today I'm covering just a general CV. As long as you've got a good idea of some of the do's and don'ts, then you can't go far wrong. All right? Okay. Here we go, let's carry on. What's the next section? So contact details first. Next, after your contact details, you should write a personal statement. Now a personal statement is a very short paragraph. Don't title this section. So don't write personal statement and then the personal statement. So you don't need this title when you're doing this section. So don't title this section. Make this section short and snappy. That means quick. Make it to the point. So it's a short and snappy statement. It's around 50 to 200 words maximum. Basically between, between three and six sentences. Okay, between three or six sentences is about right for a personal statement. Um, and this basically tells your potential employer who you are, what you can offer the co their company, and your career goals. So it tells them three things, who you are, what you offer, and what your goals are, what, you're, what you want to achieve, why you want to do this job. Um, you can write in the third person, or you can write in the first person, that's completely up to you. Um, but if you do write in the third person, don't use your name. So don't be like, Anna has worked as a teacher for many years. So don't, don't use your name, okay? I, if I was writing in the third person, I would say um, um, online online YouTube educator seeking seeking um, a permanent role within a school. So I refer to myself as an um, an online educator rather than referring to myself as Anna, who is an online educator. Yeah, so don't use your name if you're writing in the third person. But both forms are acceptable: writing the first person or the third person. So here's an example an example paragraph here. Let me just put these in quotation so you can see. So I've written here, a highly, I've written in the third person, a highly skilled sound engineer with extensive experience in maintaining and repairing sound equipment, looking for a challenging, fast-paced environment within live broadcasting to utilize my technical knowledge of sound recording equipment and develop my creative skill set further. So a very short, snappy statement at the very beginning of my CV. It tells my potential employer some very important things. It tells them, first of all, who I am. I am a highly skilled sound engineer. It tells them what I can offer them. 
I can offer them extensive experience in maintaining and repairing sound equipment. So if they're looking for someone with experience of maintaining and repairing sound equipment, then they are in the right place. They should continue to read my CV further. And it tells them what I want, what I want from them. I want a challenge. I want to be in a fast paced environment. I want to work in live broadcasting because I want to use, to utilize my technical knowledge. Now there I've told them again that I've got technical knowledge, extensive experience of sound recording equipment. And I tell them that I want to develop my creative skill set. So I've told, I've told them my goals, what I offer and who I am. So in a very short sentence, uh, sorry, a very short paragraph, they get exactly what they need to know whether they should read further. Okay, so that is your personal statement. Personal statements are difficult to write. They can be difficult to write. It takes a bit of time. I would always um, spend a bit extra time on my personal statement because that's the first impression. Okay, so that's your introduction. So spend a good amount of time going over your personal statement. Get someone to help you. Get someone to proofread it for you. Um, yes, personal statement, very important. Then we move on to our experience. <clears throat> so, depending on, depending on whether you are a student just graduating and looking for a job or whether you've been in employment for a long time will depend on how you order your CV. Now, if you're a student and you're looking for your first job, maybe you've had a few little jobs but nothing serious. If you're looking for your first big role, your first big job, then you would put your education next. Your education would come next. Your education and um, your skills, because you don't really have any job experience to talk about. So your education would come in this section. Um, obviously, if you've been in employment for many years, like myself, I've been working, well, since I was 15, really, um, and I'm 35 now, so that's 20 years. I've been working for 20 years. Oh gosh, how the time flies. So I have a lot of work experience. I've done lots of different roles, um, lots of different jobs. So I would put my work experience next and my education will come later on in the CV because that's not as important. <clears throat> so when you're talking about your work experience, you would title this section and this would be where you outline your employment history. It's written in reverse chronological order. Reverse chronological order. This is very important. Don't start with the very first job you ever had years and years ago. Start with the job you've done most recently and work backwards. Okay? So start with the job you've had most recently and work backwards. So um, in the first job that you write, you write about the job that you've just had. And with this one, give a lot of detail about the job. Then as you work backwards through your history, then give less and less detail because it's less and less important. So for example, um, let me see, a job that I... Re so I recently... My most recent job before what I do now, I worked as a marketing manager in a design company. So I would put a lot of detail about what my roles were, what my responsibilities were, maybe what I achieved during that job. I'd put all these details in. Then as I worked backwards, maybe 15 years ago, I worked, um, I worked as a, a, a flyer, a leaflet girl. I gave out leaflets in the streets. I stood in the streets in the cold and the rain and I gave out leaflets that people didn't want. I would not even put that on my CV probably, but if I did put it on my CV because it was relevant, I wouldn't put any information about it. I would just say CV girl and the date and the company I worked for. I wouldn't put all the details about it because it's not important. It was 15 years ago. The most important things are the things I've been doing most recently. Okay? Hello, if you are just joining me now, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about CVs and resumes today. If you're not already a subscriber, then please do press that big red.
Yes, press the big red subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you don't miss any future lessons and that you're not late in future. <laughs> um, there are lots of amazing English lessons here. Amazing, if I do say so myself. It's a bit modest of me, isn't it? Um, so there are lots of English lessons here for you. So if this is not of any use to you, this particular lesson, do go and have a look at the other lessons on offer and I'm sure there'll be something that you will find helpful. Okay, should I see how many thumbs we've got before we carry on with work history? How many thumbs do we have? <gasps> 70 thumbs. Okay, let's get that to a hundred thumbs. So if you're here and you find these lessons useful, please show your appreciation by clicking on that thumb right now. Lovely. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to carry on. So working backwards. For each role, every role that you've done, that you decide to include you should include the name of the company. It's really important. Who did you work for? Um, you Now, I put you should include the location. I would include the location if it's um, if you've worked in different countries. So if I worked for Apple, then I might put Apple um, head office, Apple New York or something like that. Um, so perhaps I'm going to put this in brackets because it's not actually super important but I would put the location if if it's been in different countries because that, that could be a good interesting talking point. You definitely need to put the dates of employment. Um, I tend to put the month and the year but as long as you put the years that you worked there. If you've worked somewhere only for six months then put the month and the year. If you've worked for some someone for eight years then maybe just put the years that you worked there. Okay. Um, you want to put the position that you were employed in. So I would put marketing manager for X design company, um, 2014 to 2016. Then perhaps, as I said, a brief description of your responsibilities and your achievements in that role. But keep your sentences brief. In fact, bullet points can be helpful. So sometimes it's nice, it makes it look nice, it's easier to read if you list things in bullet points. Okay? Okay. Um, Serene, it, you, for, for each role include, you must include. Um, I'm not saying each role includes, this is what you must include and that's why I've written it like this. For each role include the name of the company, the date of employment, the position you're employed in, and a brief description of your responsibilities and achievements. Okay, we'll look at some examples um, at the end so that you can get an idea of how to list your employment history. All right, lovely. Okay, so if you are a recent graduate, this section is now really important for you. Um, for everyone, you can, you can include your, employ uh, your education, it's quite important. But the longer you've been in employment, the older you are, the further away from your education you are, the less important it is. Now, for everybody, unless you don't go back any further than 15 years old, so any, any qualifications or certificates or anything that you got before GCSEs or before the high school education, don't include those. So we tend to include our high school education, which in the UK is GCSEs. Um, our college education, which in the UK tends to be like A-levels. And university education, which is the most important one if you have an edu uh, a university education, which are things like um, degrees, master degrees, PhDs, those kinds of things. So it, it doesn't matter, obviously, if you don't have a university um, education. You just put what you do have. So if you have a university education, if, if I, I have a master's degree, so I went to school, got my GCSEs, I went to college, got my A-levels and diplomas, I went to university, I got a degree, and then I went to university again and got a master's degree. So I have four points of education that I can talk about. Now, because I have all this education, I won't talk about my GCSEs. I'll talk about my master's degree. That's the most recent thing that I did. It's the highest level of education I achieved and um, it's important. I would include my degree. 
depending on what I'm applying for, I may include my A-levels, but probably not, actually. For me, the degree and the master's are the most relevant. Um, it, it is assumed that if you have a degree, then you had to have a certain level of education before that. You can't go and do a degree if you don't have A-levels or that level of education. So they're not important. So if you have a university degree, then you would consider whether it's relevant to include your A-levels, but don't include your GCSEs. If you don't have a university degree, I don't know what I'm doing with my fingers here. <laughs> if you don't have a university degree, then include your college education and your GCSEs, your, your high school education. If you don't have a college education, if you don't have A-levels, then just include what you achieved at high school. Um, most importantly, most employers will want to know, do you have English? So even if you are a native English speaker, they'll want your English to be at a certain level. I'm not talking about language here, we're talking about general English as a subject. So I had to have English and maths at C or above for my high school education in order to progress. And most employers want to know that you have English and maths at a certain level to progress into employment. So include those things. Um, obviously, if you've been in employment for a long time, then like I said, maybe just include your degree or your master's if if that's what um, you achieved. Um, okay, so let's have a look. As I said earlier, if you're a recent graduate, then put this as the section after your personal statement before your work experience, because I'm guessing your work experience, if you're just finishing being a student, will be things like being a waiter or doing small tasks, small jobs that aren't really relevant to the industry you're trying to enter. Um, this is also written in reverse chronological order. So you'd start with your university um, qualifications, then you would go down to the ones you got before that, your college education, and before that your school education. Um, list and date all previous education starting no earlier than 15 years old. That's what I've just talked about. Um, remember that your qualifications may not be familiar to a potential employer, so write the British equivalent. Now, what I mean by this is if you, if you have your education, I don't know, um, if you're in Thailand or Colombia or just any other country and you have full education there and you have all these qualifications from your own country and you're coming to work in the UK or with a British company, or with any other company, there's something to be mindful of, they might not be familiar with your type of qualification. So for example, here we have GCSEs, A-levels, degrees. They might not be familiar to you in your country. You might have a different type of qualification. So if you're writing your qualifications on your CV and they're not qualifications that we would recognize here in the UK, put your British equivalent all right, so that it makes sense to them. So they can say, okay, so they've been, they've been educated in a different country, but they've got the equivalent to um, a, an A-level. They've got equivalent to a degree in science, in engineering. Okay. Um, connection seems all right for me here. Is anyone else having a connection problem? I can see someone's commenting on connection. Ma mask, mask, you're having a connection issue? Hopefully, hopefully it's just your end. Just try to refresh, try to refresh the page and hopefully that will work for you. Okay, so let's get back on it. So your qualifications. Again, we'll look at an example CV in a moment so that you can have a look at how they've written theirs out. So the next section, after you've talked about your background, is to talk about your skills and achievements. This is a chance to talk about things that you are proud of, whether that is an award or a personal professional goal achieved. So it might just be that you, um, you ran a marathon, you raised money for a charity, you launched your own business, you started a YouTube channel and managed to gain 40,000 subscribers. In fact, we here today on this channel are close to hitting 40,000 subscribers. 
I don't know if it's going to happen during this lesson. It might do. Wouldn't that be exciting? Wouldn't it be exciting if we hit 40,000 subscribers? I would have reached a personal and professional goal during this lesson. Where are we up to? We're 45 subscribers away. <laughs> Can you help me? Can you help me to hit 40,000 subscribers during this lesson? Do you think that's possible? Okay, the way we would do this is that you would hit the share button and share this with one of your social networks, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, and tell people to come into the lesson and subscribe to this channel. Maybe, maybe we can do it. Maybe it's possible. I think 45 is a bit of a stretch, but potentially. Okay, so you talk about a personal or professional goal that you may have achieved, something you're proud of. Also here, list your additional relative skills. For example, you might say, um, I'm fluent in, in, lang in English. Uh, maybe you have a, a qualification in English language. Maybe you've passed one of the English exams, which would be very important if you are applying for a job in the UK. They'd want to know that you are a certain um, level of proficiency within English. So if you have a qualification to prove that, then that would be helpful to put in this section. You might also, if you are applying for a driving job, you'd need to say that you have a, a driving license. So you'd put the type of driving license. I've done jobs where I had to drive and in my CV, I would write a full, um, a full clean driving license is what I used to put. Full clean driving license, UK driving license. So just put whatever you have. It might be that you have a, a bike license or some particular type of HGV, which is a heavy goods vehicle. You might have a HDV license to drive those big lorries. So you'd write these in this section if it's relevant. If you're applying for a job in IT, you don't need to write your driving license in the skills section because it's not relevant. It's unnecessary. They don't need to know if you can drive. Um, you could also put um, any computer software that you have experience with. So if you are... Um, if you're proficient with Word, with, um, with PowerPoint, if you're proficient in um, Excel is usually a good one. If you are very good at using these, if, you're, if you've got a lot of experience with them and you know how to use them, that could be a real asset to a company and it's something they would want to know. If you're working in a very technical industry, perhaps there are there are specific softwares to that industry that you might want to mention if you know how to use them. For example, I work in media, of course. I am very experienced with using the editing software Final Cut Pro, but I don't know how to use Premiere, which is another popular editing software. So I would say um, proficient in editing with Final Cut Pro so that they know that that is a skill set that I have to offer. So this is an important section, really, to give them that, that extra little bit of knowledge about what you can give them. Um, so, yes, you also might want to write typing speed. If you're uh, applying to do something like... There are some jobs where you have to take dictation, where you have to take notes a lot, where you have to write in shorthand, perhaps, or you have to type really fast, and they might be interested to know your typing speed. Um, there's a there's an actual way of measuring the speed at which you type. I don't know it because I don't use it, but um, you might want to include any skills like that that you have that are relevant, of course. Okay, any questions on that? My patrons are very quiet this morning. Patrons, are you all right? Is everything okay over there? Um, okay, do you see CVs have to be specific to the job or can you write a general one? Um, make them specific to the job. It depends how important is it for you to get this job. If you're just applying to um, a supermarket to be a checkout girl, or if you're applying to um, a, a, a chip shop, a fish and chip shop to be um, to have a weekend job. If it's not important for you, if it's just a general job, just to get a little bit of extra money while you're studying or um, just to get by, then maybe just do a general CV. If it's a job you really want, it's a career move. It's an important role in a company that you've wanted to work for for a long time, that you feel very passionate about, 
then take your time and make your CV relevant to that job. If you don't take time over your application, why would they take time over considering your application and considering you for the job? I think you get out of it what you put into it. So you put your time and effort in, then you'll get rewarded. Okay, you'll receive the rewards. So I would always tailor my CV to the job I'm applying for if it's an, a job that I care about. Okay. Hello, Alonzo, how are you? Alonzo is one of my patrons. Alonzo, are you in the are you in the Skype chat room? I sent you the link. You should come and join the Skype chat room. Come and join us. Come and join. Anyway, okay, let's carry on. So, uh, then you would have, after your achievement and extra skills, you would have your hobbies and interests. Okay, so in this section, in, ideally you'll include hobbies that are related in some way to the role or the industry in which you want to work in. Try to avoid generic interests. So this is like general, the same thing that everyone else writes, which is, I like socializing, I like going to the cinema, I like eating food. This doesn't really tell your potential employer anything interesting about you. It's just what everyone says. I like hanging out with my friends, so does everybody. I like going to the cinema. Most people like watching films. Use this section to, to wow them. Give them something interesting, something different, something that is uniquely you. So, for example, if you're going into a sales role or you want to work in sales or marketing, then if you are a member of an acting group, uh, an amateur dramatics group, or if you make YouTube videos, or if you have a podcast, even if it's just a hobby, these things are really interesting and relevant to that industry. If you, um, if you are going to work in a technical industry, maybe a, an IT industry or a gaming industry, then it might be good to put, um, if, you, if you're involved with any kind of um, computer game groups, if you like spending your time playing computer games or, um, or anything related to that, then put this in your hobbies and interests section. If you're going to be working um, outdoors, if you're going to be working in conservation or in nature and you volunteer at the uh, local animal shelter and you walk the dogs, then that would be something perfect to put in this section. So hobbies and interests, put something interesting, something different. Don't lie, tell the truth, but put something interesting. Oh, lovely, we've had another sponsor. You guys are being incredibly generous today. I've got um, Lindy Witaria, Witari? Lindy Witari, Lindy Witari. Thank you very much. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I don't know if I did, but thank you very much. That is super kind of you to drop a super chat. Again, that will go into the pot and all these donations go towards increasing the productivity and quality of this channel. So thank you, it's very much appreciated. Do feel free to drop me an email and I will send you the notes after this lesson has finished. Thank you. Okay, so after our hobbies and interests, then what do we put? We would write, um, typically here at the end, you put your references. Um, like I said earlier, um, your references should be um, from your referees, sorry, your referees who write your references should be your previous employers or teachers. So if you're just coming out of college or university and you haven't had any previous jobs, your referee should be your teacher, um, a teacher who spent a lot of time with you. If you have been in employment for a number of years, then it needs to be a previous employer. It would seem strange if you have been employed for a few years and your reference comes from your teacher. So they would think that maybe something went wrong in your old job or you weren't, your previous employers maybe weren't happy with you and that's why you haven't given references from your previous job. So if you've been in, if you've been in work for a few years, references from your previous employer is the standard. Okay, so commonly, if you're going to put this section in your CV, you would include the referee's name, 
address and number and email address so that your potential employer can then contact them privately for a reference for you. Okay? Um, you don't have to do this. You could just write this line, references available upon request. And then if they decide that they want a reference, then they can ask you for the referee's details. So you can just write that, which is what I would tend to write generally. It saves me having to get all these details initially. Okay, so a couple of you are saying to me, um, uh, Anna, are you using Instagram? Yes, I do use Instagram. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, then please do come and join me. Um, I'm trying to offer regular videos. I say daily, but some days I do miss because of being too busy. But I try to offer daily pronunciation lessons, little short videos. The link to my um, Instagram account is in the description box below. So do go and join me there. I'd love to have you. Um, a couple of you, are, loads of you are being super kind, saying very, very nice things. Um, when it comes to questions related to CVs, I'll do it all at the end. So just save your question. I know I've missed a lot of comments. Forgive me. I'll do it all at the end. We're nearly there. Okay. Um, what if I've just come to a new place and I have no references? Um, Surely you will have some form of previous education or some form of previous employment um, wherever you've come from. It can be back in um, your home country or wherever you've been previously. Um, unless you've not had any education um, or employment previously and you're starting out completely from scratch, no education, no employment, then in that case, which is very rare, in that case then I would potentially put someone who knows me who has a good standing in the community. Like if you know a doctor or if you know um, a, a, a judge or a local policeman or someone who's got a um, kind of a respectable role in the community, if they can give a reference of your character, it would be a character reference then. Um, Paluxio, can I use the word resume instead of CV? Resume is American, so if you are um, applying for a job with an American company or in America, then say resume. Um, if it's with a UK-based company or it's in the UK, say CV. Okay, let's have a look what else we've got here on the notes. So, okay, let's have a look at the examples of well-written CVs, shall we? So, here we have, what do we have here? This one, let me just get it up on my screen. It's this one, yeah. Okay, so this is a technical CV. So this is a CV of someone who has a lot of skill. A lot of skill. Now you'll see at the top here, they put their name, their full name, but not their middle name, their first name and their family name. They've put their full UK address. This is made up, by the way, this isn't a real one. So this is a full UK address. They've put their email address, it's a reasonable email address, uses their name, and then a contact phone number. This is at the top of the CV, quite clear, bold, stands out from everything else. Here they then have their personal statement. So remember the personal statement um, is when we talk about who we are, what we have to offer to a company, and um, what our career goals are. So this person says, due to graduate in 2017. So this person is still studying. So they've made that clear from the very beginning, which is important. Due to graduate in 2017. Um, they've put, I have acquired technical knowledge and skills from my course, as well as practical and business skills from my industrial year in a software company in Germany. So they're telling me what they have. They have knowledge and skills, practical and business skills from a year, they had a gap year in a software company in Germany. So they've got some experience. They're not just students, they've got some experience in work as well. I have used a range of languages. This is what they have to offer the company, a range of languages, operating systems and development tools, as well as experiencing the systems development life cycle. This is all very technical, obviously, specific for this industry that they're applying to. 
um, specializing in mobile technology. I am, and they're, now they're talking about their, their goals. I am keen to develop as a graduate trainee in software development. So this is what they're after. Okay, so that's their personal statement. It's a bit long, but it's a good personal statement. I just have to say a big thank you to Laha Ale. Laha Ale, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you very much. You too have sponsored this, this video. Thank you very much for your contribution, your super chat that will go into the pot. Um, lots of love to you. Please do send me your um, email address. So drop me an email saying, hey, I sent you a super chat. Please can I get the notes? And I will send you these example CVs and the notes from this entire session. So thank you. You're all being super generous today. It's very, very kind of you. Um, where were we? We were on this one. So, no, this one, there we go. So that was a good personal statement. It gives the reader the, those eight seconds that they're gonna spend looking at your CV, it gives them an idea of who you are, what you have to offer and what you want. And because they're a student, they've started with their education because that's the most important thing. So they've said here, um, the university that they studied at in bold, and they've put the years that they were studying. Okay, so in bold, under a bold section called education, you might want to underline this. You could potentially underline this, that would be normal. And then um, University of Bedf Bedfordshire, 20... 13 to 2017, then you put what you were studying um, and what your what your um, subject was. So a, a BSc in computer science and software engineering with an industrial year. Because they haven't graduated yet, they don't know what they're going to get, but they're predicted to get a 2-1. If you have graduated, then you would put what you achieved. Um, and then they put a little statement about what that time um, included, what they've, what they've learned so far. So they've got modules including um, object-oriented orient programming, mobile applications, AI and system, systems development, third year industry placement, it says where that was and when that was, placement year, individual project, um, stock control systems for wholesale food suppliers, final year project. So they've given lots of detail about what they were doing. Now for me, this is a little bit too much writing. I potentially would put these on bullet points just to separate them out, just so it's a bit clearer rather than one big block of writing. But that's just me. They then put the next place they were at before that was Highbury College in 2011 and 2013, to 2013. They did a BTEC um, I did a BTEC at college also. They did a BTEC level three in ICT. So that's what they were studying. Um, sorry, BTEC level three, ITC, and that's what they were studying um, also, A-level math. So they did two things there, a BTEC and an A-level in ITC, ICT and maths. It's like a tongue twister, that. ICT, ICT, ICT. So that's clearer. They didn't have to put any extra statements here. And then before that, because they are a graduate, they're going to put all their they're going to put all their previous education on here. So they're including their school. They were in school at this time. They achieved seven GCSEs in English, maths, science, German, IT, PE, and history. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, then um, they've put a section here, their skills. So remember here we'd put our achievements and skills. They've written um, their skills in development tools. So they talk specifically about the software they're used to using um, and the packages as well, just general IT packages. And the programming languages, so they can program. And these are the languages they're familiar with. And the operating systems they're also familiar with. So they've given a lot of detail there, that's very handy. And then they've got a section for other training and skills. Oh, other training and skills. These are obviously very technical. Don't know what this is because I don't work in this industry. Um, they have an extra certificate in systems development 
and they are conversational in German, including technical and business German. Really good to point that out. If you have any languages, that's usually helpful for most companies. Um, and here then they've put their, their employment history. So they have had some jobs, so they've put their employment history down here after their education because these are less important in this scenario. Okay, and here they put bullet points of what they had to do in those jobs. Then they've put their, their interests, sports and interests, and again they've bullet pointed it. And there they've written a sentence, references available upon request. Okay, so that's a technical CV. It's quite long, isn't it? Two pages, two pages. Um, how are you guys all doing in the chat room? All okay? Good. Okay. Um, all right, we're nearly at the end. We're nearly, well, how long have we been on? An hour. And how many subscribers do we have? Have we bumped that number up at all? Am I going to achieve my professional goal? We've had five more subscriber drawings lesson. Hello, welcome, my new subscribers. So we now need 40 subscribers to hit that 40,000 subscribers during this lesson mark. I don't think it's gonna happen. But we can, we can keep our fingers crossed. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is go through a um, just a conventional CV, so someone who has been working for a long time, just go through how that looks, and then I will open up to questions, all right? Um, okay, so a general CV. Da, 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 da. Uh, which one is it? Let me find it, this one. Joe Smith. So... Joe Smith, um, oh, Joe Smith has done it the other way around as well. Interesting. Oh, because this is a graduate. Oh, this isn't the kind of CV I was hoping it would be. All right, we'll go with this one anyway, but just bear in mind that if you're not, if you're not graduating, if you've been in employment for a long time, your employment section comes first. That's the biggest difference. Okay, so let's have a look at Joe. Joe Smith, address, email address, phone number. Here's a nice short personal statement. I'm a final year maths undergraduate with customer service and sales experience in the energy industry. As a tutor and maths club coordinator, I can explain maths concepts to all ages and abilities. I am keen to use my maths and commercial skills to train as an energy industry analyst. So that includes everything we need from a personal statement then it very quickly, University of Birmingham, during these years, this is what they studied, the subject and the predicted grade. These were the modules covered within that time. And then they went to the Anytown High School. Before that, they got A-levels there uh, in maths, physics and chemistry, and an AS level in geography. And then they got nine GCSEs before that. Then they talk about their employment history. This is their position. They were an inbound customer service advisor. This is who they worked for, Energex UK, the call centre, sorry, Energex UK call centre. And these were the times in which they worked there between 2014 and 2016. These were their responsibilities while they were there. Oh, I'm terrible at highlighting the right, <laughs> the right sentences. So this is what they did while they were there. So that's really clear. And that's how you should set yours out. Then they also did maths tutoring for 11 plus between 2013 and 2014. And this is what they did. They were assessing pupils' levels of maths and confidence. They were preparing and delivering individual lessons. 100% pass rate of students. That's an excellent thing to include. That makes, means you must be a good teacher. Then additional things that you're proud of. Um, or in fact, they've put volunteering under educate um, under employment because it's a form of employment. So do do that if you've done any volunteering work. It comes under work, and this is what they did as a volunteer. And then they've put their achievements underneath that. Their hobbies are sports. Here they've just put sports, and that's it. One page, nice, clear, concise CV, really quick and easy to read. Easy to get an idea of this person, this Joe Smith. And so we'll know very quickly whether we want to call in Joe for an interview. All right. Okay, so 
Um, start thinking about questions that you want to ask. I'm going to just finish through these notes and then I'll answer your questions. So to write a good CV, try to use positive active verbs like achieved, arranged, assisted, coordinated, completed, dealt with, developed, established, expanded, handled, handled is the same as dealt with, helped, implemented, improved, increased, interviewed, if, you're, if you've worked in recruitment, introduced, maintained, managed, negotiated, organized, which is the same as planned, processed, programmed, proposed, promoted, purchased, redesigned, reduced, reorganized, revised, sold, solved, streamlined, supervised, trained, translated, worked, and wrote. So these are all good words, verbs that you can be using to help your CV seem a little bit more professional and make it stand out more. So these are great words to use. Avoid using the words team player, hardworking, and multitasker. These words come up time and time again on people's CVs and they're just generic. It's, it, it would be hoped that you would be a hard worker. So lots of people put, I'm hardworking. I would hope that you would work hard for me if I employed you. So you don't need to put hard working on your CV. It just, it doesn't tell me anything particularly about you other than what I already expect from you. I would expect you to work hard, so don't put hard working. Um, team player. Everyone puts team player. I, I would expect that if you're being employed by me, that you would work well with me and well within my team. Um, so you don't need to tell me that you're a team player, okay? And multitasker also comes up quite a lot. Um, most people these days have to multitask within a role. So it kind of goes without saying that most people can manage a few tasks at the same time. So don't put those words. It just, it doesn't tell us anything. It just adds unnecessary bulk to a CV. Okay, um, just a few more things to go through here and then I'll take your questions. Um, additional topics to discuss. Format. So as with the email lesson that I taught last week, format's important. Don't go for some fancy font. Don't do nice scrolly font or like handwriting font. Always type your CV, by the way. Never do a handwritten CV. Always type your CV. Do a standard business formal font like um, Times New Roman, um, Arial, um, Helvacity, whatever that's called. Basically, the font that I'm writing in now, for example, would be a good font to use. Um, just a general standard font. Standard size, so no bigger than 12. The font should be no bigger than 12. Um, obviously, you would adjust the size of potentially for, like your contact details would be a little bit bigger, maybe, and your personal statement would be a little bit bigger than the rest of the writing on the on the CV. But generally, keep it no bigger than 12. 14 maybe for the titles, the subtitles, okay? Um, then no colours, don't use coloured um, ink either. Some people, I've seen CVs come through in like orange <laughs> or pink and purples, don't do that. Keep it just standard black or dark grey. Um, if you're emailing your CV out, do it in a PDF format. I've come across this problem myself on many occasions. I use Apple and therefore I use something called Pages to do my writing. A lot of people don't work with Apple and so when I send them Pages, they say I can't open this format. 
So I have to change it to a PDF and a PDF can be opened by, I think, everyone. So write in a PDF or change it to a PDF format before you send out your, your CV via email. Just means you will have no problems with them opening up your CV. Okay. What else do we have? Proofread. This is super important, guys. Sorry, just having a little drink. So, proofread. A sloppy CV will hinder your chances. Always proofread. I fall foul of this all the time. I'm dyslexic. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you'll already know this. Um, with my dyslexia, it means I make a lot of spelling mistakes. I'm not very good with spelling. I can't see spelling mistakes very easily. I have to really, really concentrate. So if I'm writing in a hurry, or sometimes if I think too fast and I write and I can't keep up with myself, I make terrible writing mistakes. So then it's important to go back, once you've finished your CV, go back and read it again. Leave it for a little while, come back and read it again later on. Looking for any mistakes that you might have made in grammar or spelling. I would always ask if it's important, and your CV is quite important, I would always ask somebody else to go and um, read it over for me, to look for mistakes. Um, so it's, yes, it's very important that you proofread before you send it out, okay? Um, don't ever lie or over-exaggerate. It can be quite tempting to, um, to over-exaggerate or to tell little white lies, we call them. Lies that we think are not that important, like maybe saying, maybe saying that you had responsibilities that you didn't have or maybe saying that you are interested in surfing or diving with great white sharks just to make yourself sound more interesting. But, or saying perhaps that you are um, proficient with Excel spreadsheets or that you um, can use Microsoft Word and you just think, well, if I get the job, then I'll learn it. More often than not, if you tell a lie or you over-exaggerate, you will end up making things worse for yourself. There's nothing worse than being in an interview or actually getting a job and turning up at the job and then finding out that you weren't being quite truthful. Then it will just make you seem like a bad person, like you know someone who can't be trusted. So don't do it. It's not worth it. So don't lie or over-exaggerate on your CV, as tempting as it might be. Now, if you have big gaps in your history, for example, I'm an actress. I am a trained actress, a professional actress. And because I've been now doing YouTube full time, because I wanted to come and help you guys properly, I decided to go full time on YouTube in December. So as an actress, I have not had any real acting work since January all the way through to now. So where are we in June? So that's a long time, a big gap, where I haven't technically been employed as an actress. So any casting directors looking at my CV as an actress will say, oh, Anna hasn't worked for a long time. Well, what's going on? So it's important that we just explain those gaps. So for me now on my acting CV, I have a, my personal statement. I say, um, Anna is now a full-time YouTuber trying to um, grow a, um, an online educational channel for English learners. So that it's, it's very clear to my potential employers or people who are interested in my CV, it's clear to them exactly why there is a gap in my CV. Okay? So don't worry about gaps. Gaps are not a problem. Even if you've got a gap for um, because you've been ill before or you took time out to have a child or whatever it was. Maybe you took a sabbatical to go and do some learning in a different country. These are all fine. They just add to the interesting potential that is you. So don't lie about it. Don't worry about it. Just make it clear on the CV why those gaps are there and and don't be ashamed of it, okay? So another point, and a really important point, is be on LinkedIn. If you're looking for employment in the UK, be on LinkedIn. Loads of companies now use LinkedIn for employing, and you can have your CV on LinkedIn, and people do job searches on LinkedIn. It's becoming more and more popular, so have a profile on there. 
And with your LinkedIn profile and your CV, keep it up to date. We change and a CV should be an accurate reflection of you. So make sure you keep them up to date. And then a question that came through earlier that I already answered was, tailor, um, tailor your CV for each application. Like I said, if it's an important job, then take the time to make sure your CV makes you look most relevant for that job. So as an actress, my CV has lots of acting jobs, lots of acting jobs, radio, television, theater, immersive theater, children's theater, Shakespeare. If I was applying for a job in a commercial, maybe I'm going to be selling um, tea bags for a British tea company, I would take off my CV. I would take off jobs for me doing children's theater. I would take off most of my theater credits because those jobs aren't relevant to me doing a commercial. I would leave on all of my commercial work. I would leave on all of my media work. I'd leave on my TV work. Um, I would put on there that I had training in television. I would put that I had training. I had experience in broadcasting live because that's relevant for that job. If I then had a job interview for um, the Shakespeare's Globe Theatre in London to do Romeo and Juliet, I would take all my commercial work off and I'd put all my theatre work back on. I would write that I'd um, taken part in um, a festival that actually previewed at the Globe Theatre, so I'd previously been on that stage. I would put all these things on because they are relevant to that job. Okay, remember you want your CV to be short and concise. So you don't want to put everything on there, especially if it doesn't matter for that job. If it's not of interest to your potential employer, don't write it on, okay? All right, so now is your time to talk to me. Um, oh, we've been on for an hour 16. We did that a lot quicker than I expected to. <laughs> That's good, okay. So now is your chance to talk to me. Um, if you are here at, and it is your first time, then please do press the subscribe button and that bell notification button so that you don't miss any future lessons. Um, I know that about 60% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed and that's a shame because right now this channel, this community could be as big as 40,000 people. But at the moment we're only 39,964. So we're close, but we're not quite there. So if you're watching and you're not a subscriber, then do me a favor, just click the subscribe and the like button and let's just be one big community together. Now, one thing that you can do to help me out, and I looked last night, so many, so many of you have already contributed. I'm looking for your language on my videos. Um, I only speak English. I speak a little bit of lots of other languages, but I'm not fluent in anything else. You have a wonderful skill of being able to speak English and obviously your own language. Now, it would be super helpful to this community and to your fellow countrymen if you could put your language skills onto my videos. I'm looking for people to translate titles, descriptions, and for, if you have the time to do subtitles. You can even offer English subtitles because I don't have the time to write the English subtitles. There are automatic subtitles for all my videos, but sometimes the automatic ones are wrong. So if you have the time and you feel like your English is advanced enough, I would love to have your language on my videos. If you are interested in helping me with that, then the link for adding um, translations is in the description box below. Also in the description box below, there are links to CV writing books and resume writing books. One of them is a free Kindle version. So if you have Kindle, then there's a free book that you can get down there as well. So go and use those links. Um, also, my social media links are down there. So join me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well, if you so wish to. I do also offer courses and private lessons and all those kind of things. And all those links can be found in the description box below. Um, right, questions. Patrons, how are you? Um, Alonzo, you're in the Skype room. Wonderful. So patrons, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. And let's start having a look through your questions on YouTube. 
Hello 1953 Emo, your first lesson live with me from Slovakia. Hello, welcome. I hope you're a subscriber. Do press subscribe. Um, Anna, what's the difference between the pronunciation of jury with a court and jewelry? Jury, jewelry, jury, jewelry. Um, Laha, do you mean add subtitles to your videos? Uh, yes, if you if you don't mind translating um, subtitles, that would be wonderful. In your language, that would be amazing. But if not, even just doing the title and descriptions, I've got hundreds of videos here and lots of them have already been translated into different languages, but I want your language and ideally on all my videos, but I know that people are busy. But if you have the time, that would mean the world to me and it would help this community to grow. Hello, Jean-Luc, how are you? What is the time when you come live? It's different every day. Next week, I'm not going to be live as often as I have been in the previous weeks because I am organizing to move house and I have a lot of big and interesting projects coming up and lots of editing to get through um, that I've been doing over the last few weeks that I need to finish. So next week, I won't be live as often. Um, I might be live maybe three or four days of the week, but not all five days. The best thing is to join me on Instagram and Facebook to find out when I'll go live, okay? Um, okay, is there a specific dress code for a job interview? Okay, it depends what job you're going for. If you're going for a job in a bank or in an industry where you would tend to have to turn up in a shirt and a suit and a tie um, or just looking smart, then go to your interview like you would dress for work. Go to your interview in a suit with a shirt and a tie, look smart look clean, brush your hair, wear nice polished shoes. If you're going for a job in a creative industry, maybe a design industry or um, a media, um, then maybe a bit more relaxed, maybe wearing a tie and a suit is too much. So maybe just a shirt and maybe some smart jeans and some smart shoes. So I always think dress up like you're, just dress like you want to impress and dress like you're going to your first day of work in that job, okay? Um, Laha, Laha, because you've dropped me a super chat. Anyone who's dropped me a super chat, please email me um, to get your notes and my email address is at the bottom of the description. So have a look at the description of this. It's at the bottom, just drop me an email, okay? Um, so in India, a CV is popularly called a bi bio data. Okay, so there you go. If you're Indian, then a CV is your bio data, apparently. Okay, thanks, Amal. Thanks for that. Any more questions about CVs um, or anything, really? Hi, hi, Jimmy. How are you? Um, can we add a photo to a CV? Don't add your photo. Don't add your photo to your CV unless you're applying for an acting job, a presenting job, or a modeling job. There's a very good reason for it. Um, you'll have a photo on your LinkedIn profile. So it's there if people really want to see it. But if you are generally sending out a CV, don't add your photo because you don't want them to discriminate against you based on the way you look. So you don't want to give them any reason to discriminate against you. Discrimination shouldn't happen, but it does happen. People can't help but make judgments based on people's looks, based on people's age. So don't give them the opportunity to. It's only human to make judgments or first, you know, first impressions is what we get of people. So don't put a photograph. You know, it just, it's better not to. Let them judge you based on your experience and your skill. So there's no need to put the photo on. I wouldn't. Um, all right. Um, how about applying for an English for an English teacher in a new school? If you're applying to be an English teacher in a new school, um, well, then you'd you'd write the CV as as written as we've gone through today. You'd put all your previous experience, your education, um, your background, um, your teaching qualifications. Um, you look more motivated today. That's good. Can you explain to me what is RP? Um, RP is received pronunciation. RP is an accent that um, basically the Queen would speak in a heightened RP kind of sound. Um, it is 
um, an accent that was created by the BBC so that everybody in the country could understand one certain way of talking. So RP as an accent does not belong to any particular region within the country. It is an accent that is considered to be... Um, I'm doing heightened RP now. It's an accent that's considered to be um, spoken by the well-educated, by the rich, by the aristocracy. Um, heightened RP is only really now spoken by the old gentry, the, the monarchs. Um, it's not very popular and general RP, again, is not, it's not widely used. It's what I speak now, what I teach is a, a very soft RP. So it's a, just a standard soft RP accent. It makes you clear and understood. It's a general standard accent. Okay? But it's not regional. It doesn't belong to any particular area. Um, if there's a gap in my CV that's caused by depression or any other mental health issues, would you be honest? Um, if there's a gap in your CV, CV because of illness, but you are now better, then, then you can be honest. I think it's important that... Um, the important thing is, are you well enough to work now? What your employer will want to know is, if you've had time out because of illness, will that illness have an effect on your ability to work now? If the answer is no, I'm completely better, I have it under control, then there is no reason for you to lie about it. There's no reason for you to be ashamed of it. Um, so just be honest with them. Say You don't have to tell them exactly what the issue was, but you could say, I took three months out due to ill health, but I'm now 100% well. It won't affect my ability to work. Just be completely honest, okay? Um, Congrats on your new home, Anna. Thank you. How about if someone has participated in, a com in conferences or workshops? Could that be mentioned on the CV? If you've been involved in... Um, if you've attended conferences and workshops, if you've attended them, um, if they're very special workshops, perhaps they were really, really um, educational, then you might want to mention it if you don't have much on your CV. But um, I don't know. The thing is, with a conference or a workshop, you can attend a conference. It doesn't mean that you learnt anything. They're not necessarily very practical. And you don't get any certificate at the end to say that you have learnt something, that you've definitely taken that knowledge away. So I don't know. If it's very specific to an industry and you think it would help your application, then, in, in, then add it. But um, I wouldn't, I don't think. Um, what else do we have? Patrons, are you okay? Patrons are so quiet today. Um, I used to, If I used to teach in a university, would you use the word teacher or lecturer? Um, and the position should be for or of. I mean, a teacher of or teacher for. Okay, so I would... I think there, there has to be, let me have a look at the difference between lecturer and, t I think a lecturer um, is, is different to a teacher. It's someone who gives lectures at a university, um, whereas a teacher you would find, I'm guessing, more at a school, or a teacher can cover all sorts of different things. Let's see if I can find this here. Did you give did you stand up and give big lectures? If you if you mainly gave lectures, then I would say lecturer. And I would say or um definition. I'm just trying to see what the actual definitions are of these two. Yeah, teacher is mainly associated with school and lecturer is mainly associated with higher education. So maybe go for lecturer so that it's clear. Um and um I would I put I would put of, not for. So um, a, le a teacher of English, a teacher of science, a lecturer um, of whatever subject it was that you covered, okay? Um, da, 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 da. Is it considered a lie 
Um, my friend speaks very well in a British accent, so he always tells the new principals I'm half Egyptian, half British to get better chances in teaching field. Is it considered a lie despite not harming anyone? It's a very dangerous thing to do. Um, so if you tell what we call a white lie, a white lie is a lie that doesn't hurt anyone. Um, like it, yeah, it's just a little white lie. Um, if you tell a little white lie and they find out, what will they think of you? That's what you have to bear in mind. If you tell someone that you are half British and then they see your passport or they find out through some other means later down the line that actually you're, you're not half British at all, you're Egyptian, then they'll be like, why have you, why have you um, misinformed me? Why have you misled me? How can I trust anything you say when you told such a basic lie that you didn't need to tell? I understand the temptation to tell little lies on your CV in order to get a role, but it's better to get a job based on your skill and based on your performance than anything like, rather than on lies. If you, if you don't have good foundations, if you're not employed for who you are, then it's a very dangerous road that you're going down. Because if they find out that you've lied, they're gonna lose all trust in you. So I would tell your friend to be very careful. Um, okay, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just looking back for some questions that I can answer that are helpful for everybody. Um, what do you have to write in an email in which a CV is enclosed? A kind of a cover letter? Question mark. Um, no. So if you're emailing a CV, I would email the CV and a cover letter and then the email would simply be, um, dear whoever it is you're writing to, um, please find enclosed my CV and cover letter or something like, um, um, in response to your advert, apply, I am applying for the role of blah, blah, blah in your company. Please find enclosed my CV and cover letter for your consideration. I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, Anna. I did do a, um, I did do a lesson recently on how to write a formal email but of course, if it's one just to send a CV to apply for a job, then I would keep it nice and short. And then your cover letter will be attached. So you'll do a proper cover letter as an attachment, as a PDF attachment. Um, those of you who have to leave, goodbye. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm only going to stay for a few more minutes now, guys, because the day is getting on and my voice is getting tired. How do you pronounce resume, 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 zum, zum, resume, and guarantee, guarantee. Um, Anna, how to speak British English? Just keep joining me. I've done lots of videos to help you. Um, I do have a course as well if you really want a British accent. I have a course. The link is in the description box below, uh, britishenglishpro.com. Feel free to um, go and check that out. Although I think we're having problems on the website today. I need to sort that out, which is why I need to go soon to go and fix the website. Anna, are you originally from Manchester or from London? I'm originally from Manchester, but I changed my accent, so you won't be able to tell I'm from Manchester. I have one more question. Please do ask. Yes, if you've got more questions, ask away. And then I'm going to say goodbye. Do we have 100 thumbs? Do we have 100 thumbs? And how many subscribers do we have? Da, da, da. <gasps> 39,967. Not quite at that 40,000 mark. Never mind. Um, okay. Thanks a lot for this really interesting lesson. You're welcome. I'm glad you found it helpful. Um, Jana, will you make a lesson on how to behave during a job interview? I will. I did record a video on job interviews ages ago with Chris. Do you remember Chris from, um, I can't remember the name of his English channel, but Chris is a wonderful English teacher. Um, we did one on job interviews, but I didn't like the footage afterwards. Um, I think there was a problem with the camera and it was all blurry, so I didn't use it. So the intention is to do one on job interviews. I'm writing it down right now. Thank you, Jenna, for that suggestion, for reminding me about that good topic. We have 149 thumbs, boom. Thanks guys, you're awesome. 
I feel like I'm running out of vocabulary. Any ideas of how to increase um, your vocabulary? Okay. Um, open your mind to new subjects. So if you feel like you're running out of vocabulary and you want to increase your vocabulary, then um, try reading a different type of book. Um, try watching a different type of film. Um, read newspapers. Just You need to just immerse yourself in language. And then when you hear a word that you don't know, highlight it and go and check it out and then try and use it three times in the following week. Okay? Okay. You love the, you'll miss the twinkling lights in my house when I move. I will get twinkling lights, I promise. I'll get twinkling... Wherever I move to, I will get twinkling lights. Lots of lights. Um, thank you for all your kind comments. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to go. So thank you very much to my patrons. Um, you haven't really said very much today. I hope you're all right. Um, but hi and goodbye. Um, if you haven't yet clicked subscribe, please do click subscribe. Um, make sure you've given this video a thumb up before you leave and do go and check out some of the other videos. Um, yes, there'll be lots coming up. If you do take up the italki offer, which I mentioned at the beginning, the $10 italki credits, then let me know how you got on with your first lesson on italki. And if you enjoyed it, I'd love to know more about your experience. Um, and um, if you want to get involved and be a patron and help this channel, then feel free to check out the Patreon page. The link is in the description box below. Um, oh, Ella, bless you. You've just sent another super chat. You are so sweet. Thank you. Um, that's very, very kind. And uh, Gautan said, can I send a super chat by PayPal? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyone who has sent a super chat today, you will receive the note. So please do, please do um, send me an email to remind me to send you the notes. I'll send you the notes that we worked with and I'll send you the two sample CVs so that you have something to work with um, when you're trying to remember what we covered. If you do want those notes, then you've got about three minutes to send a super chat over. Um, you send a super chat by clicking the dollar, the dollar sign next to the emoji sign in the comments box below. Um, so yes, you can do that. And I will then change the format of the notes into PDF and email over to you in PDF so that you can definitely open them and you can make use of them. Of course, if anyone decides to become a patron, then all patrons' messages are answered. Not necessarily straight away, but I always answer messages from patrons. And next week, I'll be, I'll be drawing the winner of the Patreon giveaway. So every month, um, patrons are entered into a prize draw. And I pick one winner, which is great because there's not many patrons, so your chances of winning are very high. I pick one winner to do a Skype call with me. So you do a 15 minute Skype call with me, just one-on-one, -on -one, just have a chat and practice your English speaking. So if you want to be a patron, you want to join the Skype group and um, go into that prize draw, then do consider becoming a patron. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month and you get lots of rewards for being a patron and supporting this channel. Um, like I said, the description box has all those links that you might need. All right, I'm going to sign off now, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely day. Thank you for all of those generous super chats that have come through today. You guys are incredible, and I very much appreciate your love. Um, and um, 1953 Emo says, I look forward to you hitting 40,000 subscribers. I hope it won't take long. Thank you. I look forward to it too. Um, great. Thanks, guys. Have a lovely weekend. Um, I'm going to Wales. I'm going to go camping, so I'll probably be quite tired next week because I would have spent a, week in a, a weekend in a field with sheep camping and hopefully having nice weather. So keep your fingers crossed for me that I have nice weather for my camping weekend. Otherwise, you have a lovely weekend. I'll see you at some point next week. I will be posting up a schedule soon so that you'll know on Facebook and Instagram. All right. Mwah. Lots of love from London. Take care. <laughs>